Hey guys, my name's Jasmine. I'm Miriam. I'm Nana. I'm Rebecca. And today we're going to be telling you about the hidden truths of first year at university. Keep, Keep on watching! In university, students are undoubtedly given a heavy workload and due to this they end up putting all-nighters, which leads to worry and poor sleep quality. It's currently 3pm, let's come back later and see how many students are still working. It's currently 10.43pm and a lot of students are still working. The average adult should get 7 or more hours per night, but I and a lot of other university students get much less than that. Researchers assessed the relationship between sleep disorders and anxiety, and they found a positive correlation between clinical anxiety and insomnia. Those with clinical anxiety reported 50.8% daytime sleeplessness, compared to 30.9% of those without anxiety. Depression was not assessed, and this should be distinguished from anxiety, and it's also contributed to sleeplessness. Sleep hygiene and schedules were also not considered, as well as the use of drugs, which could contribute to sleeplessness. Now we're going to be talking about eating habits in university. Follow me to one of the student accommodations on campus. Researchers have shown that adolescents do have a good understanding of what it means to eat healthily. However, despite this, they still fail to not meet the guidelines. One example of unhealthy eating that is common in university is binge drinking. Binge drinking is defined as one consuming four or more standard drinks at once. And statistics have shown that this is most common amongst UK university students. Pearson's product moment correlations managed to identify a positive correlation between a lack of agreeableness and weekly levels of alcohol, which expresses the negative effects alcohol has on young people's personality traits. However, researchers have failed to establish sex differences between binge drinkers and the possible differences and effects that it may have. Leaving home can be quite difficult, especially for those moving miles away from home and everything they've ever known. This leads me on to my next topic, homesickness. Homesickness can be defined as a distress caused by actual or anticipated separation from home. People experiencing homesickness may also suffer from depression, anxiety or withdrawn behaviour. Studies on homesickness report that up to 70% of participants report feeling homesickness at least once. However, there are issues with past studies on homesickness. For instance, homesickness is often assessed using retrospective assessment. The issue with this means that questionnaires represent past homesickness rather than momentary homesickness. And in doing so, only provide a general picture rather than focusing on the individual experience that may fluctuate over time. We decided to conduct a semi-structured interview in the hopes of collecting primary data for ourselves. Here beside me, I introduced a student at University of Warwick. So, how did you cope with homesickness during the first couple of weeks of university? I found that uh, keeping contact with my family and friends and just having things that reminded me back home really helped me kind of stay calm and grounded during the first week. And what would be one tip that you would give a fresher? I would say try not to visit home too much during the first term as that could often just make being homesick worse and actually just sticking out and getting regular calls with family and friends will just help you through the first couple of months. Flatmates, arguably the that will either make or break the university experience. You're spending a lot of time with your flatmates, so you want this to be as smooth running as possible. Living in halls can be a great experience if you go about it the right way. Make sure to have those really important conversations about cleanliness, drinking and noise within the first week. Living in such close proximity means that your sleep is likely to be disrupted by people having parties or having their friends over in communal spaces such as the kitchen. Recent statistics have shown that up to 60% of students report poor sleep quality. Studies suggest that due to a change in schedule and increased independence at university, this will also risk your sleep quality. But do not let this discourage you from forming really strong friendships. Recent studies also show that students are less likely to drop out of university if they feel as though they've been able to form meaningful friendships. This makes the point about spending time with your flatmates even more salient as a way of de-stressing from academic pressure. Make sure to prioritise time to have games nights or leave your accommodation with your flatmates and you'll finish your degree thanking yourself for having acquired such a great work-life balance. We hope you found this useful. Good luck transitioning into uni. Bye! Bye.